It's time for Around the Ozark Sports Scene with Scott Perrier. Now here's your host, Scott Perrier. Welcome to Episode 4 of Around the Ozark Sports Scene. I am Scott Perrier. Let's get started talking some sports here in the Ozarks. Of course, we always start with our, basically, what's happening in the Ozarks, what to look for this coming week, weekend, and, and things to watch. And uh, got a big, big football game coming up uh, on Saturday for the Missouri Tigers. They visit top-ranked and two-time defending national champion Georgia Saturday in Athens. This is clearly Coach Eli Drinkowitz's best team to date in Columbia. Five years of Mizzou. He's uh, off to a 7-1 start this year. But just how good are these Tigers? We're going to learn a whole lot more on Saturday after they play uh, the Bulldogs, who maybe are not quite the level of Georgia teams that have won the national title the last two years, but they are clearly still the best team in the country. So we'll know a lot more about Mizzou after Saturday afternoon. A win could thrust Mizzou into the top 10 in the national polls on the radar for a major bowl game. And looking at the rest of their schedule, I don't see how they could not finish 9-3 and three or better if they do uh, get a big win and a program statement win for a drink with some Mizzou if they can knock off Georgia. So uh, keep an eye on the Missouri Tigers this weekend. Missouri State football Bears, they'll try to bounce back from a 44-28 loss at number 24 Youngstown State last weekend. They're home with Illinois State in a 2 p.m. kickoff Saturday over at Plaster Sports Complex. Bears are now 3-5. and five. Illinois State is 4-4. Four and four. Dropped a tough home loss to a ranked uh, Northern Iowa team uh, last weekend. So another stiff test for Missouri State in the Missouri Valley. Meanwhile, Evangel football just continues rolling along. The uh, Valor are 9-0. and They will look to stay unbeaten uh, for Coach Chuck Eppel's squad there uh, that is now in the top 10 nationally at number 10 in the NAIA poll. They are at number 24 and a 7-2 and Southwestern College on Saturday in Winfield, Kansas. And, of course, high school football districts are underway. First round last weekend, a lot of teams had the uh, the week off if they were one of the better teams in the district with a bye. Everybody's playing now. It's a survive and advance type situation. Get out to watch some area high school football games this Friday night. Special guest on today's Around the Ozark Sports Scene podcast is the legendary baseball coach of the Missouri State Bears. He's won uh, 1,373 games in his career That ranks 12th overall among uh, college coaches. Number two active coaches uh, on the list there, Keith Gutton, is. 137 Bears have signed pro contracts, including six first-round draft choices. He's won 20 conference championships, taken a dozen Bears teams to the NCAA tournament, including a very memorable trip to the 2003 College World Series. He is Missouri State baseball coach Keith Gutton. Hi, Keith. Good to be with you, Scott. You bet. I appreciate your time and just kind of wanted to do a, a little fun interview with you as, as you guys wrap up fall ball now and, and head into the winter. you got some special events coming up and then uh, time to get going once the uh, spring semester hits. Uh, kind of give us your, your thoughts on uh, fall ball for the baseball Bears. Pretty pleased with it, Scott. You know, we have uh, six guys out of the portal we were able to obtain. And I think all will make a contribution we were able to bring in a Division One catcher with experience, which is something we wanted to do with our couple of young catchers. Dylan Leach had a good fall for us. We brought in a outfielder by way of Crowder in Tennessee named Logan Chambers. We couldn't really get on the field of Tennessee, but we think he'll be a contributor here. We brought in the Friday night guy from Tarleton State who uh, more of a strike thrower, won't be a Friday night guy here, but will help us, Hunter Day. His uh, coach at Tarleton was Aaron Mead, a former Bear pitcher, so that was the connection. Brought in a Division II All-American from Ashland, Ohio, left-handed pitcher with one year left, and he had a very good fall for us. We look for big things from him, along with a shortstop and a pitcher outfielder from Nova Southeastern in Florida. So the portal at this point has been good for us, Scott. Is it a delicate balance for for finding, you know, like in your case, uh, local or regional high school kids or national for that matter with the portal guys that can help now? I mean, how how have you guys been able to tweak that and refine uh, your approach to it the last couple of years? I don't know if I'd call it a delicate balance because you're – you're tasked with getting the best players you can, and we've 
been fortunate over the years. We've had a lot of good local players. We'll continue to try to do that. But it, it's hard to turn down a guy that's proven himself already at the college level against good competition while also obviously mixing in some junior college players as well. Uh, you talked about the local kids. Curry Sutherland from Rogersville, one of them uh, that uh, obviously drew a lot of attention. His signing, Brody McNeil, his teammate, I know is out for the year, I believe, with uh, rehabbing an arm, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Curry was a two-way guy and played third base in the fall, swung the bat, was competitive, also was pretty good on the mound at times. I think there's a lot of upside there. Unfortunately, Brody was injured last spring, had surgery, and He's well on his way to rehabbing. He will miss this spring and have four years left. And, uh, of course, we can't comment on the underclassmen that have committed to us at this time. How many do you have so far? Which class? Uh, the, the, <laughs> how many verbals do you have right now? I mean, is it a big winner for you? Are you talking about in the 24 high school graduating class? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's there's eight. There are, Right now, they're all high school kids. You know, that's the first wave of signing. We chose not to really pursue junior college kids this fall. We have some guys we think are borderline drafts on the current team. So I think we'll get a clearer picture as we go into spring and start to get a feel for their season. Uh, Excuse me. You bet. Uh, For their season and their draft prospects, I think that'll give us a little clearer feel on junior college guys this spring and you always want to keep slots and money available for potential portal guys as well is a kid like a curry sutherland today just as an example um typically more equipped to step in and play quicker because of travel ball because of the collegiate leagues in the summer i know i think he went to cape Girardeau for the summer Talk about that situation now. Are you getting high school kids that are a little more ready uh, when, when they arrive on campus? Yeah, I think that summer preceding that freshman fall is really important. And, you know, there's not as many 18-year travel teams as there used to be, meaning graduating seniors. So we've been fortunate in placing a lot of these guys. That's the prospect league, Scott. They have teams all over the Midwest and – I think we had other high school kids in Springfield, Illinois, and with the O'Fallon Hoots and maybe another place. But getting those guys out to hit with wood all summer to face some level of college pitching is always beneficial when they show up in the fall. And, of course, one of the highlights, I think, for area fans in the fall is always the uh, the battle for, battle for Bell. It's hard to say if you're not uh, slowing down there. But uh, – Talk about uh, what that meant, uh, what that has meant to you, and and uh, this year's game with Drury as well. Well, for me personally, it's always about keeping the legacy of Howard Bell in front of people in this community, and those of you who are of our age or close, you're being a lot younger than I am, but know of Howard's exploits as both a player and a coach, and what he meant to this community, and I think we should keep his name in front of people. You know, it's always good. Jury's always very competitive. Scott's an excellent coach over there. We we enjoy playing outside competition, and uh, it's another good ball game. Of course, Scott Nasby, the jury coach, played for you at, uh, at Missouri State. Got to love what he's done um, the, the past off season with Metter Park and the fundraising to turn that into a, a turf facility. Um, do you see the Bears maybe – occasionally using that as a practice facility if it's available? I know that has been kind of an arrangement in the past. Yeah, I, I do, and Scott and I have talked about that possibility. It's certainly a lot more convenient uh, than maybe some other options, and I know we'll have a good re- working relationship with him, and really hats off to him to raise that type of money and put it into this, not only into jury's facility, but just to help the whole community, because when you have turf, you can do a lot of things at a lot of levels in helping baseball grow in this community. You and I go back uh, about 40 years. I, I covered the Bears back uh, right out of college uh, for the news leader, and, and uh, Metter Park was home. I, I'm sure that going back out there, that's going to create some fond memories for you. And what, what are some of those that stick out in your mind? 
Well, I think the memories in that ballpark, Scott, in particular, are more fond for the hitters <laughs> than they were the pitchers. Yeah. Because the dimensions were short for most Division One schools. The wind blew out of the south, and we we're fortunate we had some physical guys, and you know we, we scored a lot of runs. Uh, I don't think our pitchers and pitching coach were maybe as appreciative of Metter Park as some of the offensive players, but it was home. Uh, we had some success there, and you know certain teams didn't really like going into Metter Park. You know they got off turf fields, they got off for bigger parts, and they had to adjust and. Maybe it was a little bit of an advantage for the Bears. And you, you recruited a little bit different kind of player at Metter Park, too, didn't you, as a hitter? Yeah, I, I mean, we'd still love to have some of the guys that hit in that ballpark now. So, you know, you're always trying to get physical guys that uh, hit the ball hard. And if it goes in the air and hard, got a chance to leave the park, that's fine, too. So let's let's play a, a little game here. If we had a home run derby at Metter Park now, and you could bring back the Bears in their prime to participate in it, uh, who's got to get the invites on that? I, I mean, I, I know Ryan Howard and Jake Berger, obviously. Uh, tell me some other guys that you, you want to see uh, bang balls in Metter Park again. Jason Hart. Yeah. Steve Hacker. Yeah. The aforementioned Ryan Howard, Jake Berger. Um, Brian Mahaffey, Brian Mahaffey, Matt Sapicki, um, probably oh, Jeremy Ironman. So we've had a few that could get it over the wall, and, and that's been great. Who's your money on in a home run derby like that? Well, you'd be hard pressed not to take Ryan Howard with his power to all fields. Berger would give him a run, wouldn't he? Well, there's. So it's a picky and hacker and hard, I promise you. So, <laughs> it would be a lot of fun, you know, wouldn't we it? Had, we had a string there where we had uh, Hacker, Hart, and Howard. Called them the 3-H club. They were our first baseman for 10 years, and that was we were spoiled. Oh, know? absolutely. Yeah. you got to be proud of Jake Berger and, and the way he's bounced back from just really a, a, an awful health start to his career. Very proud, and, you know, he's been outspoken, Scott, about some of the issues he had to go through mentally to make it through that. He's tried to help other people uh, that might be going through similar situations. But, you know, I don't know how much you were around, Jake. I don't think you were that much at the time, but this is a special, special guy, great family, and I'm, I'm very happy for him. Doesn't seem like it could be 20 years ago that uh, the College World Series trip, uh, does it? Uh, you know, not when you think about it a lot, which I admittedly do, but, uh, it's still, you know, obviously a special time with a great group and, uh, try to, you know, every year when you start the year, you try to repeat it. Does it make you realize just how hard it is to get there? Yeah, it does. And, you know, um, getting to host. Any kind of postseason obviously puts you in a better position to have success. And, you know, I will say to you that the opportunity to host here in uh, 2015 was certainly a highlight, I think, for anybody that follows Missouri State baseball. Absolutely. You know, I've asked this question to some of the guys I know that have been around for a while, like yourself, in other sports, you know, basketball and football and it's coaching now because of all the things we have with NIL, with with the portal and all that, is it more or less enjoyable than maybe it was um, 10, 15, 20 years ago? Well, you know, I can remember, Scott, in when I first started, and I think you're in maybe elementary school, but uh, basically you, you went out to Matter Park, you practiced, nobody bothered you, nobody was around. You know, not to say that this is a bad thing, but there was no compliance office. Um, things were just much simpler in those days in terms of taking care of the field, which Brent Thomas did, by the way. Uh, you didn't have to go through all the hoops to do all the stuff now. You know, there was no NIL, not really a portal. It was just 
things were much simpler in those days. And, of course, on the flip side, you know, recruiting got a little bit, I wouldn't say easier, but more convenient with the Internet, did it not? Yeah, but I think we've always maintained we were going to see players before committing them. And, I, you know, I'm not to say that's been 100%, but I'd say it's certainly been over 90 in terms of guys that have played here we've seen previously. And, you know, you do get some leads now, certainly, um, through social media that you can follow up with, you know, calling scouts or coaches and see if it's worth the trip. But uh, certainly want to see you guys in action. And then having them on your campus to a camp has always been beneficial. You know, good or bad, fundraising has always had to be a part of it for you, too. I mean, you're, you're not blessed at a school with – SEC TV revenue coming in for football, so you guys got to figure out how to get it done. Uh, you've created some great special events as a result, and and I know that the step up to the plate coming up uh, in December, December six, have those things uh, become a little more enjoyable and fun for you now because of the excitement it stirs up among the fans? I think so, and and we've been fortunate. I have to give Bill Cox a friend who is, owns Scramblers and really we live kind of in the same area a lot of the credit he was the one with the initial idea for step up to the plate we had always done first pitch and have continued to do so but it was bill's idea to have another fundraiser and he was involved in helping secure the food and prepare it and bringing it and uh, selling some tables so he's kind of started the idea and we've just been very fortunate to get the quality of speaker guests that we've had and certainly no exception this year as we bring in the headliner ozzy smith on december 6th yeah how the heck did you pull that off a lot of negotiating um <laughs> i actually have a good friend in st louis who's a personal friend of his and we talked about it from time to time he just said let me let me call and uh, ozzy has a business manager very professional nice lady And that's who you go through. So she and I have spent some time discussing and emailing back, and we got it to work, and we're excited about it. And preliminary sales are good, and we need to continue to sell more tickets and more tables. And that will sell out probably if you wait too long, correct? I think so. We we have physically 264 chairs to sit in, Scott, and that's at the old glass place west of the Shrine Mosque off St. Louis actually owned by the University Foundation. I think it's a great venue. The sound system is very good. Uh, We'll bring in a quality meal, a buffet. Uh, The one thing about contractually, Ozzy is not able to sign autographs on site, but there's some picture availability depending on what table you buy. So I think it'll be a great event. And before I forget to throw it out there later, tell us how people can get tickets and where they can call to find out more. Right. Well, they can call the baseball program at 836-4497. They can call Holly Angel. I'm searching for her number as we speak here. That's our administrative assistant. Or they can simply email Keith Gutton at MissouriState.edu or Holly Angel at MissouriState.edu, and we will take care of them. We have a what's called a storefront online that can go online with a credit card and purchase their table or individual tickets. Individual tickets are $75 each. As we mentioned in year number 42 as the Bears boss over there, of course, an assistant before that, a player before that. Did you ever imagine being at one place this long when you started your career? I never thought about it. You know, just thought about the next day and always happy where I was, not worried about being somewhere else. And, you know, people have asked from time to time, Scott, you know, what, why did not, why didn't you maybe look at other places or possible opportunities? And I always, my answer has always been the same. If you like who you're working with and you like where you're living, why would you really want to change those two things? And that's kind of my MO in terms of, you know, going somewhere else. And 
Not that people were just breaking my door down either. You and your lovely wife, Marianne, uh, raised three wonderful daughters. Um, How much of a factor in keeping you fresh over four decades was it the fact that you could leave a ballpark and go home to an entire girl house? Well, as long as they'd give me peace to watch the NFL on Sunday, everything was good. (laughs) That was, but no, it's great. I mean, I was, uh, I would just say a lot more one dimensional before I met my wife and had a family. And now we've got two grandsons that we love to visit. And, uh, yeah, it certainly makes everything, uh, you put it more in perspective when you have the family waiting for you. It's definitely been a great thing for me. Is 2023 Keith Gutton more mellow than 1983 Keith Gutton? 100%. And when did that process uh, kind of start changing? Well, probably when I started have when we started having children, you know, you 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 can't really scold a baby, you know, you can't really, you, 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 there's not much you can say other than beg them to behave. Could uh, could Keith I Gutton having children mellowed me a great deal? I imagine it. And could Keith Gutton uh, have played for Keith Gutton back in the eighties? Oh yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it would have been fun, but you know you. Yeah, sometimes you have to separate the message from the messenger. And, um, I, you know, the interesting thing, a lot of those guys from that first team, first few teams, I stay in touch with, remain very close to. So uh, evidently they were able to separate the message from the messenger. What's the best prank any of your players ever pulled on you? Uh, I don't know if it was a prank, but we got rained out against Northern Iowa matter, and the place was a swamp, and they all attacked me and threw me in the water. I don't know if you call that a prank, but I know Sapicki was leading the charge, and I didn't have much defense. Did, did it? I'm sure it was. This was the case, but did guys get braver as they were in the program longer? I mean, some of those freshmen had to be scared to death of the, of the legend of Keith Gutton and the stories. But the, the older guys, they kind of morphed to where they knew what they could get away with, didn't they? Yeah, I think the, the, the freshmen still, I mean, I think, you know, maybe the, the stories get exaggerated, I'm sure, as the years go on. But I think the freshmen still feel their way now. <laughs> you know, of course, you're known affectionately as G, your coach G. We'll call it the G tree. It has so many branches there. Former former uh, assistant coaches of yours have gone on to success, and players that have gone on to play professional ball. You know, just kind of running the gamut there. Um, how proud are you of that tree of people that you've been able to kind of form their careers as well? Well, proud of all, not just the ones that are in athletics. I mean, we've got doctors, lawyers, and people successful in banking. People that are remained in this community, not even from this community, that have had success here. So they've each, uh, you know, not everyone, but the majority certainly have had their own successes. A report came out last week that uh, a national report indicating that this was it for Keith Gutt in your final year. Uh, Any thoughts on that? Well, I did not speak to that reporter, but uh, I will say that's probably pretty accurate. And the university at some point will come forward and, and have a release on that. What would a post-baseball life uh, for Keith Gutton uh, look like? Uh, probably walking my dog more uh, since we don't have a fenced backyard. Uh, I would like to do something part-time, Scott. I don't know what. Uh, maybe something related to athletics or something that I think has value and maybe I could bring some value to, but only in a part-time situation. And we talked about the home life, three daughters. you got a couple grandkids now, don't you? Grandsons? Is there baseball in their future? Yeah. Well, we'll see. Um, We have a four-year-old in northwest Arkansas, and we have a two-year-old in the Overland Park area, and uh, certainly enjoy getting to see them as much as possible. So we, we sit in the geographic middle, and it's easy to get to both places. Very good. Well, Keith, best of luck uh, with the Ozzy Smith event. Again, people get your tickets early because that will sell out. And then, uh, of course, uh, the season coming up in the spring. I know that uh, another uh, loaded schedule, which, which you know, I mean, that's what you got to play in it to get to be in con, uh, in contention for a bid. Yeah, and I think if you if you look at the schedule, Scott, thirty six of the fifty five are on the road, and 
there was some intent there as well. I mean, you get a little bump for good road wins in the RPI, and as you said, when you're when you're in the valley, you got to be clawing all the time and play as good at non-league schedule as you can, and we've tried to do that. And, and did I notice that Arkansas both games down there this year? Yeah, it just was kind of a fluke. We'll resume the. I think we're going to go to home and home again starting in in uh, twenty five. But they needed home games. We wanted a harder schedule. They paid us a nice fee to come down there and play back to back games. We'll look forward to that. And I believe are they, are they weekend games this year? No, they're midway. It's Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, mm-hmm. there'll be a few people there because they love their hog baseball, don't they, in Fayetteville? passionate fans, to say the least. Absolutely. Keith, appreciate your time, and best of luck. Uh, We'll catch up with you in the spring. Thank you, Scott. It's time for Scott's thoughts as we wrap up the podcast this week. The area batted 99% in my book with conference realignment with the uh, Springfield Area High Schools. Of course, a lot of shuffling going on in that regard over the past uh, couple weeks there. I love the fact that the COC found room for Lebanon and Waynesville to go along with uh, Central and Parkview coming in. I think it's a great move to keep Central and Parkview in all sports except football, let them play independent for a while and kind of get their numbers up and and uh, then maybe look at seeing uh, if they can compete in the COC from a football sense as well. Say 99% because the, the one thing that, that I don't like is that we lost Camminton. They're going to move north to a mid-Missouri area conference there. It was just kind of nice having Camden and the Lakers, uh, especially during the uh, Shore era, Jeff Shore and his father Bob up there, uh, being able to keep tabs on what they were doing uh, by playing more of the uh, Southwest Missouri area schools there. So one other note, uh, the Houston volleyball situation was an absolute mess last week. If you uh, didn't know uh, what was going on there, uh, Houston uh, had some girls play in a charity volleyball tournament over the weekend which is a no-no according to Michigan rules because you can't play in-season events in the same season in your sport. Um, the uh, Michigan got involved, ruled them ineligible for doing so after they'd won their district title. Then it, the courts got involved. A judge ruled that that was not uh, applicable, so it meant that Houston was back in for the playoffs. Of course, they lost the night that they went to play, but just kind of a you know mess of a situation all the way around that. You know, I think Houston administration obviously dropped the ball because they know the rule. Uh, somebody should have told those girls that, you, you know, you just can't do that before it got taken to the courts. And I'm not a big fan of, of things uh, in the sports arenas, especially at the high school level, now moving into the legal system and politicians and judges ruling on things that, honestly, MISHA makes the rules and the MISHA members are the schools. So the schools vote for the things that they want enforced. They vote for the board members to enforce them. Let's just let them do their job and and, uh, keep things status quo. That's going to do it for this week's Around the Ozark Sports Scene. Be sure to play this week's Guess the Chiefs Score Contest on the Midwest Family uh, Broadcasting uh, websites, the Around the Ozarks website. It's your chance to win Chiefs tickets, autographed merchandise, and all you have to do is pick the score. If you're a winner, you're going to come out a winner with Chiefs gear as well. That's going to do it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.